This video is part two of our series on using wrist motions or gestures to make playing much easier. And in this video, we're gonna talk about playing in multiple voices in one hand or just navigating through complex passage work. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So if you've seen the first video, you'll know basically what we're talking about. So in this video, we're just gonna jump right in to the two different examples. Now we're gonna talk about two basic kinds of movements. We're gonna talk about like up and down wrist movements, right? So you can see my fingers are still staying on the keys, but my wrist can kind of move. Sometimes teachers refer to this as letting the wrist breathe. And then we're also gonna talk about circular mo motions in the wrist, okay? Now we're primarily gonna talk about playing two voices in one hand. And the two examples that I'm gonna use are from the Respighi uh, Suite for solo piano. Um, the first one is the waltz, and then the other one is the minuet from the suite. I think I, I performed this in a video a while ago, but basically it's this. It's that uh, little piece there. So later on, we have this part. We have this here. Okay, so we're gonna basically look at those uh, three measures there. So we have this melody, um, this top voice, which would be play. That melody there. Well, we have that little inner voice there. Now at first glance, you can look at this and be like, wow, that looks hard. Definitely not gonna be able to play that legato. Because if we try to, that's really kind of hard to do. Um, and I find especially because if I play my fourth finger on this black key, the black key is a little bit higher, you know, higher up, right? And if I do this, then I have to play my fifth finger on that upper voice. And because my fifth finger is long, I feel like I wanna really like drop my wrist there. And it can just sound like, you know, like, um, because basically in the top voice, we have a two note slur like strong, less strong, less, right? And it can sound like, it can sound the opposite, right? It can, it can sound, you know, less, more, less, more, right? So what really, really helps here is using kind of a circular motion there. So you'll notice, And then the same thing in this next measure. And then here. And then I'm actually not using a finger substitution there. I'm just letting go of that. Because I'm using some pedal there and I can kind of fake it a little bit, okay? And in my opinion, that's perfectly acceptable to do as long as it sounds good. Some people get really weird about that, but to me it's fine. So what I'm actually gonna do here is I'm gonna kind of like almost drop on this first note, and I'm gonna circle around, okay? And I'm really focusing on that top noise. And, and I apologize for any sloppiness here. Um, I haven't played this piece in a long time. But basically we have this. Okay, we have that top voice there. And I could definitely um, bring out that top voice a little bit more, but we just really wanna focus on the technique here, okay? So again, that circle motion. That really, really helps. And actually you'll notice that I'm sort of playing each one of these with a little, with sort of a different impulse in each one. So this is one, this is another one then here, and then notice actually this is interesting here. I lift and I don't let go of my second finger and I do that. And then I kind of swing around here, sort of like a half circle to connect this top note rather than just sort of stabbing at it with my finger. So what's interesting about this passage is you'll actually notice all these little things that I'm doing that wouldn't be obvious if you were just looking at the music. But when we combine all of the, those things together, the circles in the, t in the first two measures, and then here, 
a little bit of a lift and come back down. It helps me control that and then, and then sort of swinging over to that top note. So we get that a little bit better, okay? Now, if we go to the next piece, which is the minuet, okay, what we'll notice here, okay, and I'm really just gonna focus on the first four measures. We have this sort of thing. Okay, so I just wanna focus on that. I'm mainly gonna focus on the right hand here. Um, but you'll notice that we have and I have to hold my thumb. Okay, that's easy enough. But what I actually do there is I actually go down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, so that's more of that up, down motion that we that we have talked about in the first video. Okay, so down, up, and then I have to play my thumb again. Okay, so I have to kind of lift and drop here. We also have an accent on the top G, so I have to drop anyway. Anytime you have an accent, you're going to kind of give a little bit of a drop on that note, okay? So I'm gonna go down, up, down. Now, we have to hold down the thumb here. It's tied basically for another six beats, okay? So I have to hold down the thumb. So I have to think, okay, how are we gonna do that? And there's two things that I think are really, really helpful in this passage. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop on that and I actually, do kind of a rotational release. So I kind of rotate my arm, okay? It's this sort of like knob turning motion. And we've talked about this before, but I actually release and go this way. Now I feel like you could, you could try to play that a little bit more legato. However, we're gonna use a little bit more pedal here So I actually think that's totally acceptable. And what that does is it helps me release my fingers and it helps me kind of be a little bit more loose on my thumb. If my hand is really stretched out, it's really hard to be light and loose on that thumb. It's much easier to kind of grip with that thumb and then this doesn't work as well. So I'm actually going to release. And notice how, depending on what fingers I'm using, I'm actually gonna let my wrist go up and down. So I release here. And I kind of, and this all here, I'm going almost a little bit lower and then up on this note and then, and then the same thing, sorry, down, up, down, up, rotate, release, down, up, and then the, the next part, those fun little chords. Anyways, so you can kind of see here that what these wrist motions do is it helps me kind of navigate through this. A lot of times we'll be so focused on, you know, you know, just playing the notes that our fingers get so overactive and it's, they're like little, you know, spider fingers and they're just like reaching and moving and pulling and, and just trying to do way too much work. This makes that so much easier and it feels fine. It feels like so easy, okay? Um, and, and again, what's so powerful I think with this is that when I first looked at this passage, I thought, man, that looks hard. But it's actually not hard. If you know how to approach something, and I think these two basic concepts, right, of playing multiple voices in one hand, if you have a long note, and, an, and another voice in the uh, other, the upper part or the lower part of the hand, whatever it is. Sort of thinking about how can I use these kind of concepts to make this easier? And like we talked with the first concept is having sort of like different impulses. This is one, this is one, right? So I can lift and then drop in between and sort of have that release in between so that I'm not just building tension. So hopefully you can see from these examples how to apply these concepts when you're playing multiple voices in one hand or just navigating through things that are complicated. If you have any questions or comments, make sure and put them down below. I always love hearing from you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.